Guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at another GTX 1080 PCB, this time the Gigabyte Extreme uh, Water Force card. This also shares its PCB with the Extreme Gaming, uh, which is the air-cooled version of this uh, same card. Uh, if you would like to see the re full review of the card, you can find a link to that in the description down below. And with that out of the way, let's get to actually taking a look at this PCB. First things first, we have the Core Voltage VRM right here here and that provides power to the GPU core. Uh, down here we have the 1 volt PLL voltage. This is a extra voltage that is required to make the GPU core work but it's not really an important VRM. It's very low power. It doesn't have any impact on overclocking and it you know isn't impacted in by overclocking in any in any way either and so it doesn't really matter and you know we're not going to actually co cover that one in detail. Over here we have the memory VRM that provides power to the GDDR5X uh, chips surrounding the GPU core and in this area somewhere there is the 1.8 volt rail which also goes to the GDDR5X chips and basically um, it's a, again a low power VRM and it's basically just necessary for the GDDR5X chips to work. They take the bulk of their power from this VRM over there. Um, so with all of the VRMs uh, identified, let's actually take a closer look at what they're made up of. First of all, the core voltage is a 12-phase VRM. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, inductors or chokes, whichever you prefer to call them. And each of these has its own Dr. Moss power module, so each of these has, you know, a power module. Unfortunately, uh, the thermal pads cover uh, some of them, but, you know, if those weren't there, you could see that there's actually 12 of these, so this is a real 12-phase real design. Uh, these Dr. Moss power modules, these are FDMF uh, 6823Cs from Fairchild Semiconductor. These are rated to do uh, 50 amps at 300 kilohertz or 45 amps at 1 megahertz. Um, so, you know, they're plenty powerful. And with, you know, this 12-phase VRM and one of these per phase, you get around 540 to 600 amps of current capability uh, through this VRM here. Uh, obviously, if you've watched my uh, previous, video, uh, previous PCB breakdowns, you would know that, the, that getting a phase count above uh, 8 phases uh, requires some extra, uh, extra circuitry. Um, and this being a 12 phase, it needs to use doublers or at, or at least doublers or quadruplers to actually achieve the 12, phase, uh, 12 phases. So this is done by these three ICs on the PCB. These are UP1911Rs. Uh, Each of them takes in a PWM signal from the UP9511 uh, located over here. So this is the VRM control chip. So that monitors the VRM output voltage, power draw, and everything for this here VRM. And it feeds each of these uh, 1911, RP, uh, 1911 uh, R chips uh, a PWM signal and also monitors the current readings that are coming out of those. And those then take that PWM signal and feed it into four, uh, four, of, the uh, four of the Dr. Moss modules located in the VRM itself. Now, these chips do have a downside. They cut your switching frequency by, uh, to one-fourth of what you're uh, feeding them. So, essentially, it means that you have less accurate control over each of the phases. However, Gigabyte can actually get around this, uh, you know, downside of using these chips by uh, using a really high switching frequency from the uh, 9511. Um, and the 9511 can provide up to 2 megahertz switching frequency. So, you know, that's basically 2 million uh, updates for, you know, you know, uh, MOSFET, uh, like phase updates per second. And basically when the, that goes to the quadrupler, that means each phase can be updated as many as 500,000 times a second. So it can adjust the current through that phase that many times each second. 
And that means that as long as Gigabyte uses a reasonable switching frequency on the, uh, you know, the UP9511, the VRM actually runs, you know, actually relatively clean power uh, on par with basically any other GTX 1080 because 200 to 500 kilohertz switching frequency is the usual uh, VRM switching frequency that you'll see on most graphics cards. And really going above that is generally completely unnecessary um, unless you're doing extreme overclocking or something like that. And even in those cases, it often doesn't really help anything because most VRMs can get away with, uh, can actually do very, very clean power at, you know, 200 or 500 kilohertz already. So really running super high frequencies isn't a requirement. So the fact that Gigabyte's using these quadruplers isn't, uh, isn't a major downside. However, it is still interesting that they use quadruplers, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, and this, the reason for that is that quadruplers are relatively expensive, and they don't, like, it doesn't really make sense to use them in many, in situations like this, where you could have just used six, uh, PWM signals from the, uh, from the control chip, and then, uh, use doublers to actually get your 12 phases. However, I do believe Gigabyte opted for the quadruplers because this card has display outputs all the way over here as well as over here. And the way these guys work is that there's these switches over here. So you have display, uh, so normally your display signal goes to the back of the card, but if you would like to, the card will put the signal to, towards the back and then this switch will actually send it around to the other end of the card. Uh, and this is for VR so that you can hook up a VR output to the front panel of your, uh, you know, of your tower. And basically by doing this, there's a lot of extra traces that have to go through the PCB. And that means there's a lot less uh, available space to route traces for the 12 phase VRM, which would normally require a pretty significant amount of phases, uh, traces coming off of the uh, control chip located right there. So Gigabyte obviously seems to have opted for the quadruplers to minimize the amount of traces coming directly off of the um, off of the UP9511 and tried to spread them out between the quadrupler chips uh, around the card. So overall the core voltage VRM is perfectly fine. Ridiculously overkill for a GTX 1080 as I said before. Uh, something around you know, between 540 and 600 amps, depending on how, uh, what switching frequency Gigabyte opted to uh, feed into the quadruplers. And uh, the reason for this partially is because this VRM in this, uh, in the Water Force card, there's no airflow in this area because there's no fan. And there's actually no airflow anywhere on the PCB of the card. So all of the cooling of the card is, has to be taken care of by just, you know, uh, passive airflow from your case fans or from the fact that hot air rises and everything. Uh, and the, then the, the bulk of the heat of the card is then taken care of by an AIO cooler sitting over the GPU core right here. And that AIO cooler has a copper plate that covers all the GDDR5X chips. So those are well cooled. And then there's a heat pipe coming off of an aluminum block that, you know, is in contact with the uh, core voltage VRM right here. And that then pipes heat into the copper, copper plate that the AIO cooler uses to actually also cool the GDDR5X chips. So that's how Gigabyte basically cools the VRM. But because this isn't a particularly efficient way to cool a VRM, it does mean that they've probably, you know, did this ridiculous amount of overspec on the VRM, partially to comp compensate for the fact that the VRM temperatures are going to be less than, you know, less than optimal. They're really going to be quite up there because that one heat pipe having to take all of this heat through an aluminum block and through several, like, the thing is, like, when you're bonding heat sinks together, you know, you have aluminum block, solder, copper heat pipe, solder, copper uh, copper cold plate for the water block and that's just a lot of different materials for the heat to transition uh, through and that really impedes the heat transfer performance and that means this VRM even with the heat pipe will be running pretty 
uh, pretty toasty. So the ridiculous overkill rating here, uh, that's at 25 degrees ambient, which is basically assuming that the MOSFETs are, you know, capable of being cooled by the uh, hot air rises uh, uh, airflow. Whereas here, in a case, the card will most likely be upside down, so that's really not going to work that great. So the aluminum block uh, is there to, you know, make sure that the uh, VRM get, gets at least some active cooling, but even then, it, it's less than optimal. So I think this ridiculous car, car, like current capability is just basically compensating for the fact that the VRM is going to run really, really hot. Because uh, there's really no reason why you would need this on a GTX 1080. Uh, it, it won't really help overclocking performance because the card will never ever need this much current. But it is, you know, nice that this VRM is so ridiculously overbuilt because you basically have peace of mind that there is no way you're ever going to have this fail on you, assuming that there isn't some manufacturing defect in it. Um, so yeah, props to Gigabyte on the Core Voltage VRM. So let's move over to the other major uh, VRM on this card, and that's the memory voltage VRM right here. So that feeds the GDDR5X chips. This is a two-phase VRM. We have two chokes here. Uh, it's controlled by the UP1665. Uh, this is a two-phase voltage controller with integrated drivers. So basically, there's no driver ICs anywhere uh, you know, around this area because this can actually drive the uh, MOSFETs directly. And speaking of the MOSFETs, these are uh, Fairchild Power Trench Power Stages. So these are not regular MOSFETs. These are a high side fat and a low side fat integrated into one IC. So each of these is actually enough to make up its own, you know, a single phase. And there's two of them in each phase because Gigabyte wanted even more current capability. So they put two of them in parallel to get more current throughput. Um, the end result of this is that each of these has a 13 amp uh, high side, and that's a continuous rating, so obviously in AVRM you can expect it to do quite a bit more than that, and that's a 25 degree ambient rating, so you know the uh, passively cooled, no heat sink, no, air, no proper airflow other than, other than just convection, so uh, that you know, that rating is most relevant here because uh, there is no active airflow over this this part of the VRM and uh, it, it's going to be running pretty hot uh, just because of that. So I'm going to go with that rating, but still the continuous rating is still very, very conservative because the high side MOSFET is basically being turned on and off hundreds of thousands of times a second. It doesn't stay on uh, continuously. So you can actually expect it to do quite a bit more than the 13 amps uh, continuous rating even in this uh, terribly cooled scenario that it's in. Um, the, high, the low side FET is 23 amps uh, continuous, and that rating is actually realistically what it will actually be able to handle uh, in this application because the uh, low side FET is turned on for most, uh, most of the time when in AVRM. So that one t spends a lot of its time turned on. Uh, so, you know, we have 13 amps, uh, well, not even 13, so let's say, you know, 15 or 16 amps per per IC in each phase. So that gives us about 30 amps per, for each given phase. Two phases total, you have 60 amps, uh, you know, if you don't go by the absolute worst case scenario. And if you go by worst case possible scenario, then it's 52 amps because that's the uh, high side MOSFETs continuous rating for no proper cooling scenarios. Um, and this is again ridiculously overkill. The GDDR5X um, on a 1080 pulls around 30 watts, which with the voltage it runs at works out to around 22 amps. So you know we have a we have a 52 amp memory VRM here. So Gigabyte went ridiculously overkill, and I suspect it's again because there's no proper airflow in this area due to the lack of the fan. So. Yeah, uh, does mean that if you actually try to get some airflow into the shroud of the card, this VRM is just going to be amazing, like perform amazingly. And in its stock configuration, it's also perfectly good because Gigabyte really did go insanely overkill on everything just to make sure that it can uh, function 
in the less than optimal cooling environment that they've uh, decided to go with on the water force. Um, whereas the gaming extreme, the well, no, the extreme gaming, so that's the air-cooled version of this card. That one would actually have a heatsink here with proper airflow over the entire VRM section. So that one would actually, arguably, probably be able, you know, have better uh, VRM capabilities. Not that it really matters, because this is a GTX 1080, and even in these less than sub, you know, in these completely suboptimal cooling scenarios, the VRM setup that Gigabyte has opted for is so ridiculously overkill that it really doesn't matter. They're like, you're not gonna see a GTX 1080 use anywhere near the full capacity of this VRM. I'll be surprised, like, not even 50% of the capacity of this VRM will ever really be used. So. Yeah, very, very nice, uh, very nice PCB from Gigabyte here, and props to them for designing such a ridiculous monstrosity. If you think about it, um, so that's that for the PCB breakdown. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet, and do consider, uh, you know, donating to uh, Gamers Nexus on Patreon so we can keep bringing you more content in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.